Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Friday Night Hangout, episode number 151. Uh, before we get started, I want to let you know that you need to go visit our website, craftbearnation.org. Why, Matt? Because we don't make any money. We None. are a nonprofit. None. No money. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at CBN Community. Follow us on Instagram at craftbeer underscore nation. We're on Facebook. Of course, you can find us on Google+. Plus. Um, we have a, a few other um, products that we have available on Stitcher, uh, Pints and Quartz, and Mashing Out with the Beer Fairy, Ashley Bauer. So check out some of our shows. Follow us on social media. And um, go to our website. Read some of our blogs. We got some good stuff going on. So, so please uh, check us out. We're fun people. At least we think we're fun people. <laughs> well, we're um, funny when we drink. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we kind of want to start up tonight by letting you know that the show is going to be formatted a little differently. Um, episode one fifty one is a we thought was a good a good point to to start off the new format, and uh, we're going to try to make the show a little more concise, and we're going to try to make it be a little more informational. We want to we want to hit the targets as far as uh, styles are concerned, and and you know allow everybody to. You know, freely and expressively uh, discuss how they feel about the beer that they're drinking, how they feel about the style, things of that nature. So um, tonight we are discussing pale ales. Um, next week we're going to be discussing IPAs. The week after that we're going to be discussing double IPAs. So you see, we got a little a little series going on here at the moment. So before <coughs> uh, before I introduce the panel, well, I tell you what, no, let me introduce the panel. We have Tom Snyder joining us from Florida. How you doing, Tom? I'm very well. Shortly to be in Georgia. Okay. Moving to Georgia for good? Well, for the summer anyway. Nice. Okay. We got Ricky Potts. Yeah. <laughs> He's a hobo. A little yeah, you just gonna hop on a are you gonna hop on a train when he comes through town and <laughs> Yeah. We got Ricky Potts joining us from Arizona, from Scottsdale. How you doing, Ricky? I am good. When I got in the car this afternoon after work, it was 97 degrees, so I am doing just fine. <laughs> and they're calling for snow flurries here. Okay. <laughs> uh, we got Lola Laracy joining us from Florida. Lola, how you doing? It's been raining for weeks here in Jacksonville. I well, not literally for weeks, me. right? No, really. Well, except for a few days, it's been raining just about every day. So okay. I don't know what's happening. Uh, other than that, I'm doing okay. Fantastic. We got Jeffrey J. Davis joining us from the great state of Texas. Jeffrey, what's up, man? What's up, kids? It's uh, 80 degrees in the Bayou City today with a nice breeze and sunny, perfect beer drinking weather. So nice. You got the better weather so far. Well, yeah, you got the better weather so far. Yeah. Ricky, R R Ricky, Ricky's was just hot. <laughs> yeah, it's a little too, a little too warm. <laughs> <laughs> we got Doug Nolan joining us from Virginia, from from the western part of our state. Doug, how's it going, man? Uh, not too bad. And the weather here is getting more chilly as we speak, but not too bad. Yeah, much like you, I had to break out break out the hoodie. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've noticed where I'm located. I'm actually yeah. in the garage tonight. So, well, I was out in the bar earlier, and it was cold. <laughs> um. Charles Dunkley just dropped a little bit of ninja smoke on us, so I'm going to skip over him and go to Matt, who's also joining us from the western reaches of our of the great state of Virginia. Matt, how are you? I am fantastic. They are calling for snow flurries uh, here in the middle of the night, so I, I think I'm going to go to Georgia for the summer with Tom. I think it's what the point is. <laughs> Although I don't think Georgia's where you want to be in the summer. Uh, no, because uh, they have quite a bit of humidity. Well, I guess it depends on what part of Georgia you're going to. Northern Georgia. Okay. Oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> and I am joined, Charles is having a little bit of um, technical difficulties with his with his camera, so he's gonna he he dropped out and he's gonna join back. But I also am joining us from Virginia. I'm a little bit away from Matt and Doug. I'm in Northern Virginia, uh, about 20 miles south of the District of Columbia, where you guys pay all the money to keep it going. As in tax dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really hard to call. It's really hard to call that part of Virginia, Virginia. Man, it's uh, like yeah. a whole different place. It's a whole other state, man. Yeah. Uh, so Charles is back with us. Charles joined us from NYC. Charles, well, not New York City, New York State. NYS. From yeah. Upper, yeah, <laughs> Upper NYS. Charles, how are yeah. you? 
<laughs> Doing good, and it actually is snowing here right now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Like Other legit, than that, doing legitimate good. snow, like legit snow sticking to the ground. It was sticking the last time I looked, but um, I don't think we're really supposed to get much of anything. Hopefully, wow. what what's much mean? of anything? Like eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> Snowpack that lasts to June. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the style, um, I'm gonna kick it over to Charles. Let Charles talk to us a little bit about the parameters as it relates to uh, that style. That some of us often, oftentimes, not just us, but a lot of beer drinkers often overlook, and that's pale ales. Charles? Yeah, and I guess there's a couple of different variations of the pale ale. I mean, the more common one now here would be the American pale ale, and um, it runs like kind of a golden color to a deep amber. I think the American pale ales these days tend to be a little more hop forward. Um, it seems like session IPAs are almost like kicking pale ales to the curb and taking that market space. Mm -hmm. it's, you don't really see pale ales uh, on display as much anymore, which is unfortunate because it's for, personally for me, it, it is my favorite style of beer. Even though as big of a hophead as I am, the pale ale, that's the first beer I'll go to if I'm in any new brewery and I see they have a pale ale. That's kind of It's like when I go to an Italian restaurant, I want chicken parmesan. So to see, that's going to tell me how they do in terms of Italian food. And yeah. for a brewery, it's the pale ale. I mean, you've got your malty, you've got your malty, um, more English style, where you, the malt is really the star, and then the American one you have, which the hop is more the star than the malt, and um, you get some hop flavor. I mean, it's not a big in-your-face thing like you would expect, uh, even from a regular American IPA these days. Um, the IBUs probably are what under fifty or sixty. Under fifty, thirty to fifty usually. Okay. And um, I don't know the OG and SRM stats, uh, so. So I wonder this. I mean, Charles, you mentioned that it seems like session IPAs are kind of, you know, stealing that 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 uh that niche of the market away. I wonder if yeah. it's it's if it's tr solely attributed to the fact that you know more and more craft beer drinkers are becoming um, hop heads, mm -hmm. and we kind of gravitate more towards the session IPA because they are much hoppier than 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 a pet well than most pale ales tend to be. Yeah, and, and when anyone, when you generally think about the American craft beer market as opposed to like the European one, it, you really think hops. Hops yeah. really is the showcase, the centerpiece of American craft beer. And for pale ales, I mean, they're there, but it's really not the star. It's not what the beer is all about. Mm -hmm. um, like, like some ex commercial examples, like it's Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is like probably one of these staples of the style, um, then along with like Dale's Pale Ale. But to me, Dale's is more of a hop forward style. Okay. Uh, the beer I'm going to have later tonight, uh, my, my Pale Ale is a much more traditional English uh, esque, where the malt is really a malty, big malty beer. Well, on. Um, I was going to say, to me, like I feel like Session IPAs are almost like a rebranding yeah. of pale ales. In a way, they can be, yeah. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. It wouldn't surprise me if some of the hoppier, low-gravity pale ales we're going to talk about tonight have just been relabeled as a Session IPA. Well, in, in, without, without diving into what I have, like the one I have on the can says it's 60 IBUs. So, I mean, it's, and it's been around well before... Yeah well before Session IPAs were kind of hit the shelves. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, so much, it could yeah. be as much as of, a, of a marketing thing as anything else. I mean, yeah. IPAs outstrip and outsell uh, every beer, every craft beer out there right now. It's just what people want. So if I can put the word IPA on the can, and it really is just a hopped-up pale ale, I don't want to call it an APA or a hopped-up pale ale. I want to call it something with the words, the letters IPA in it. For market. Yeah, and, and is there any real like market control from anybody to say, no. well, you're not allowed to call that a, an IPA because it doesn't fit the IBU or ABV parameters? I don't yeah. know. If you, could really call it, any... you could call it a brown ale if you wanted to. I don't think yeah. there's any. I don't think there's any legislation that says you can. You got to call it this and this. It sure. Just, About uh, the only where you're going to run into a problem is if you try to submit it to like the Great American yeah. Beer Festival mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 it in that category. Or any competition, yeah. any, or at least any BJCP sure. certified competition for that matter. Sure. So do they? Do the, does the BJCP kind of maybe not the sheriffs, but kind of like 
are they enough to keep people, brewers in line to not like disguise well, beers label wise or so he's he's more for I guess more for the home brewers kind of thing. I mean they do use stuff like that for like the Great American Beer Festival, but the BJCP is more designed to be home brewers to kind of hit styles of you know what's been around you know the the professional brewer styles. Yeah. They're like well, the first grade. They're like the first grade teacher because the report card to a first grader doesn't really mean anything, you know. It's like you know you get satisfactory or uh, you know outstanding. So I th that's how the BJCP is to me. I mean, it's yeah. important. It, it sets standards so you can compare and score things compared to something else. But um, you know, I don't think anybody's going to say, "Oh man, we were so close, but we didn't make this BJCP qualified beer." So we'll go back and true. Sure. Yeah, I guess not. But um, and even this, even the pale ale, which seems like it's not going to have a wide variety, pretty much does. I mean, even like the English bitters and special bitters, those are all technically it's like subcategories of the pale ale in a way. And so, also, f I'm yeah. sorry, Charles. I'm sorry. So you you do really have a whole spectrum of variety in this one little area, which is why I love pale ales because you really can get a whole host of different um, presentations. And to, to Doug's point, I mean, the BJCP is like you said, mostly for home brewers. If a like w w once you get to the commercial scale, I mean, I don't think you really care a whole lot what BJCP says your beer. It's supposed to be. Who cares? I mean, we, we uh, Americans threw the Ryan Heisgebot out of the window anyway. So we, yeah. are, it's always been. We've always been kind of cavalier when it comes to, you know, breaking the <laughs> breaking the rules as they exist. So screw. I'm the curious to see what Stone is going to do in terms of playing with the Ryan Heisgebot. You know, because yeah. you know they're just going to take that and stomp yep. it into the ground. So it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, since since we, we've all kind of, not all, but we've touched on on what beer some of us are drinking, let's just go ahead and get into that, and let's, let's go ahead and start with Tom. Tom, what are you drinking tonight, man, and, and, and what, are, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, I'm having the Einstock Iceland, or Icelandic Pale Ale. Who's, what's, what's the brewery? Uh, Einstock. Unstock? Einstock? That's correct, Einstock. Cool. Uh, Atlantic area. Wow. Uh, nice honey honey colored orange, I guess. I bet it arrives pretty cold, huh? Oh yeah. Very, <laughs> very cold. I think it had an iceberg on top of it. Okay. <laughs> it floated in. Got a nice foamy head, very consistent. Just hanging right in there. Uh I've never had anything from them before. I've never heard of them. Me neither. Yeah, me neither. I've never had anything from Iceland. Got a kind of a malty scent to it. Uh, kind of a little bit of citrus, I suppose. I love the color of that beer. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful color. It's absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful color. There's, there's nothing <laughs> pale about it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I was I automatic I would have automatically assumed that that beer was going to be a little malt forward because I mean it's from <laughs> it's, it's from Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually it's a little citrus forward to be honest with you. It's not incredibly hoppy like an American beer you would say was hoppy. Mm -hmm. um, it it has a real mild bitterness to it, but, but very mild. Uh, but it's mostly kind of citrus and you know a little bit of malt backbone to it. Tom, it's kind of funny that um, they probably have to import the citrus maybe from Florida. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. <laughs> so <laughs> so some. So Tom, you'd say you'd say happy but not bitter, right? Uh, you know that it has a mild hoppiness to it, but it's not bitter. I, okay. I wouldn't say this was bitter at all. Good. Uh, is which it, is kind of what a pale ale promises, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know that it, it wants to make a pleasing, clean finishing beer um, that isn't too much of any of those things. It's you know, it's they're meant to. Uh, to have more than one of them in a sitting, and if it was if it was cloying or or overly hopped, uh, you you'd limit your your approach to it. Well, very 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 clean finish on this, uh, very crisp. Tom, we all follow you on Google Plus, and we know you drink a lot of beers, uh, different beers. Uh, not to say that you're some kind of alcoholic or anything, but uh, can you compare that to something? I've, I'm never having that before. I'm I'm interested in knowing what you think it might be like. Appreciate that question. No, 
<laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got an Icelandic beer that's unique. <laughs> Let me hold this up there so you can see it. Excellent. Yeah, that's a cool label too. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's got the uh, it's got the pirate on it. <laughs> or whatever. The Viking, yeah. Viking. <laughs> Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar Lothbrok. Pirates. You know, Rag they were just pirates of a different century. That's right. Rag Ragnar Lothbrok. Anybody yeah. watch the Vikings? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Charles, for rescuing me there. Woo. <laughs> thank right. you, HBO, for teaching you these words. Nope, that's History yeah. Channel. Boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they got the Vikings. That's mm -hmm. or something. There's that show. All right, so... Tom with his Icelandic um, pale ale that no one's ever had nor heard of, but but all yeah, want, all want because it's drinking. Apparently, it's drinking nicely. So, thank you kindly, um, Ricky. As you take a, a whiff, was that a whiff or a sip? I don't know. I, I, that was a whiff because I don't okay. want it to be gone before I talk about it. It's uh, a talk. It's funny. So earlier today, I had well, last I started late last night. I had a discussion on Twitter about a brewing company. Happens to be this brewing company, and for the next two weeks is going to be this brewing company, about a couple of beers that I make in a limited release series that I'm not a huge fan of. And I, I've always said that this brewing company, I like their just basic daily drinking beers that you can get. Velvet Merlin is one of them. Merkin, in my opinion, which is a limited release beer, is super hard to get. It's not even in the same class as Merlin, and Merlin sits on the shelf for months. So Fireson Walker responded today and said that I was, I don't even know exactly what they said, but they said I was being difficult or something. So it was funny that <laughs> they called me out in this conversation. And I was like, no, they said I was being, I don't know, whatever. You so, antagonize a lot of breweries. Have you noticed that? I, I, I have an opinion, and if it doesn't necessarily fit the brewing companies, I mean, and the coolest thing, though, so the guy that I'm arguing with is like, oh, it's the best beer ever, and you're wrong, and your palate sucks. And I'm like, well, it doesn't, because we're both right. So... That's the best part about craft beer is even if you think the beer that I drink and that I love is good and I don't like it or vice versa, we're both right. But anyway, so I grabbed a bottle of Firestone Walker Pale 31, and I haven't had this in a super long time. And I did a little research on it, and does anyone know why they call it Pale 31? I learned that today. No idea. No idea. No, but I'm sure you're going to tell us. I am. You want me to? No, I shouldn't. I should make you, make you wait until the end. Um, make so Firestone Fire, Fire Walker is in California, and they were the 31st state to be inducted into the Union, so that's why they call it that. And it actually says in the label, California Pale Ale, and I'm not sure I've ever seen that, so I don't know if that, that's just their way of, of branding and a marketing scheme, talking about how, how different brand companies brand their pale, but um, it's super light in color, like almost. Oh, I just had before is. this. I had a uh, uh, hayseed from Smutty Nose, which is a saison, and it was that was even a little bit darker than this. But this is just super. Like the nose is all hops, like just a ridiculous amount of hops in the nose, and the flavor is quite hoppy. I mean, I don't know what the IBU is, and I'm gonna look as soon as I'm done talking about it. But it's just got a fantastic flavor all around, and I rated it three the last time I had it on Untapped, and I definitely upped that that rating this time because it's just a much better experience. And I haven't had a drink in a few minutes, and the hops are still they still coated the back of my palate, and I'm very impressed with it. And again, it's one of their base basic beers. But what concerns me after I opened it and poured it and drank half of it is it says it was bottled on 11 17 14. So it's been sitting on the shelf for quite a while, but I don't feel like it doesn't taste like it has. So it's uh, a fantastic beer and easy to drink and to the point of being able to drink a couple of these in one sitting. I mean, you could probably sit down and have three or four of these and not even realize it. Now, Ricky, for, for, for lack of a better expression, well, I'm not going to say that. If, if, if it, this makes sense, that beer looks like it drinks easily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Which See, is really the which is really mo for uh for Firestone, don't you think? I mean, their yeah. Union Jack is a uh, is light and the color on their on their malt build, and they're a West Coast uh, brewery, so they're going to deliver that hop forward in whatever they do, and they do it well. I, it wasn't a criticism; it was just kind of a yeah, right. And you know, I, I I play golf, so I'm always looking for golf courses to add craft beer to their bev carts, and like this would be a perfect example of a beer you could expect to see on a bev cart because yeah, it's got some flavor and it's a little bit hoppy, but at the same time, it's something that I could drink and go play 18 holes and ABV. Good question. I don't know. Pale 31 is probably 3.1 percent. 
Oh, is that uh, I see you, uh, Firestone is starting to can some of their beers. Is that one they're going to put in cans? From what I know, no, but I can't imagine that. I mean, Pivo Pills, they started canning, and it's so good in cans. It yeah. is. It's incredible. I mean, it's dumb how good that beer is. I talking about on golf course, and I always think you don't want a can of beer on a golf course. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they don't have to be cans, but, like, you see aluminum bottles, like, from some of the big macro brewing companies, and, and I can see this absolutely being something that's in cans and would fit well on a golf course. Awesome. While we're talking about cans, I have a question. Why do cans only come in six packs? They don't. They don't. Oh, yeah. They come in four, four packs. Four packs. Ten I fitty? mean, why can't you get them singly? I can get ten fifty singly, but most of them I can't. Why not? Because you it don't go to total score. one. Yeah, yeah, if you go to total one, you can break anything. Uh, well, you can break it, anything in. Really? Any anything mm-hmm. they have in the store, you can make and you can buy a single. So they'll let me take apart the four, the six pack. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, my you, don't, you don't even ask. You just do it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, get mad if you do it. Yeah, yeah. just do it. I feel, I feel so weird and free. You should feel <laughs> liberated is what you should do. I, I feel, I feel free. I, hey, I um, have, huh? go ahead, Lola. I was just going to say, I may have to skip through Total Wine screaming, but that's okay. Jump, jump, <laughs> jump into that TARDIS behind you and go back to Total Wine today. I'm gonna do that. And make you a six <laughs> um, Lola, I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna go ahead and jump That's over okay. to Doug real quick because he has some some baby responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Got to go check. Got to go check on the little one. So, Doug, what what are you drinking tonight, man? Well, I had as I mentioned earlier, I have three pale ales spread out in front of me right now, and I was trying to decide which I one I wanted to talk about: a new one, a local one, or one that people rave about all across the world seems like. So I decided I'm going to go with the one of the three that's the best, which is uh, Zombie Dust. Um, now, most of the time, when I've had this in the past, I haven't much cared for it. I just kind of thought it was kind of a middle-of-the-road, you know, pale ale, nothing, you know, to write home about. But I don't that's know if maybe this... Yeah, I don't know if this this particular bi- bottle is is fresh, more fresh than um, in the past. It's It's about... I don't know. It's been a month, month and a half old. Oh. Like, um, that's yeah, fresh, that's yeah. fresh, sir. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the the aroma on this is just amazing. And when I you first get it, you get that kind of malty sweetness, and it it's not too hot forward at first. But then that you know you get that hot bitters just lingers and lingers and lingers. Um, and in comparison to the ones, the other ones I'm drinking, they just you know, don't have that hot presence. And I could be wrong, but I believe this is just uh, Citra hops, maybe. I think it's only Citra. Um, I'm not sure. But it's 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 really good. And I don't know what I first read this on Untapped. I'm, I could I could look, but that would take me too much time. Where, um, where does that fall in on the SRMs? What's the color of it? Have you get if you it, you know it's glass? it's actually um, it's it's oh, quite light okay. compared to like. Um, other ones that have their yeah, I mean it's kind of like a grassy orangey kind of. It's not, and it's definitely not as clear as Ricky's is. The other two I have appear to be I don't know more filtered or something. But this one definitely has a, you know, it's kind of a, a, a goldish, but it's hazy. That lights yeah. make it way brighter than it really is, but. Uh, that might be vegetation floating around in there from the dry hopping too. Yeah, I mean like. I don't remember, and it's been probably years since I last had this, and I do not remember the aroma on this just being so aggressive, because uh, it really, you really get that kind of grapefruity, tropical um, notes from that citra. But it also, it almost like has like a that kind of oh, ammonia esque, you know, fl- fl- oh, or. Yeah. That you get from like something like Deviant Dales or you know some of the big IPAs, double IPAs. Well, that would be the Citra hop that you're assuming is in there. I I don't know the hop build on that. I don't know if it's if it's single hopped all the way through or if it's just maybe if it's just dry hop with Citra. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but definitely I, something. I, there's got to be a viewer out there that knows all about Zombie Dust. That is always listed among the top one or two or three pale ales uh, in the market. I've had it and thought it was incredible. I I thought it it, it almost towed the line 
like definitely toe the line between pale ale and IPA. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think and I think like between like this one, I don't know the ABV on it, and I, I was also looking on the stats as far as like uh, I don't know if it says it on here. I don't know, um, like the stats on like pale ales versus IPAs just a moment ago, and they had pale ales being to like six percent alcohol and fifty IBUs, but IPA starting at like six percent and you know fifty IBUs. So there's kind of a gray area, and they I think both. The two pale ales that I, I like of this group, the Zombie Dust and the other one, like they're both, you know, about 60 IBUs. So they're kind of, I mean, you probably could just call them, you know, an IPA, but 6.4 percent, Doug. Okay. So I mean, that's kind of borderline of of what a pale ale and IPA. Well, Doug, are. that's that's definitely a classic that that you have there, man. And I and I don't, regardless of you know, my my palate changes with the time of the year. So like now I'm starting to come off of the stout kick and going more. But I think this pale ale was a perfect transition tonight. But um, I don't think I'd ever turn down Zombie Dust, man. So that's that's definitely. A, yeah, and I, I had gotten these other two specifically for this night, and then I was I remember talking to one of my buddies at work. He had just gotten a six pack of this in trade. I'm like, do you have any more? He's like, yeah, I've got one left. You can have it. I'm like, awesome. Cool. Well, Doug Nolan, Zombie Dust. Three Floyds. Trace Floyds. There Floyd, we go. Floyd, Floyd. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lola, I know you're on style tonight, right? For the first time in, like, a year, I am on style. All right. Lola. And, and this is because, of course, Pale Ale is the flagship beer of one of my favorite local breweries, Intuition. I would say my favorite, except for it's neck and neck with Ardwolf, and I don't want to choose favorites because I'm not like that. This is Victory Pale Ale, and um, the funny thing is, I know we were talking last night about how some breweries keep their um, their recipes close to their vest. Well, they lay out their ingredients completely. They tell you everything, and I love it. I just wish it weren't such tiny writing, because I can't see it. <laughs> but, I, but I can read that it's 28 IBUs. Oh, wow. That's pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty low. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's low. So it's very pale, pale, pale ale. <laughs> and um, 5.3 alcohol by volume, which is why I'm still able to talk to you tonight. You might be able to finish that tonight, Lola. Yeah. Well, this is <laughs> no all stop I've got required. left. <laughs> this, is, this is all I've got left. And I, I had another beer earlier, so I got a head start. You know. Can you hold it up again, Lola? Okay. Nice amber yeah. color. You yeah. Know. Pretty nice. It's very pale. Um, I get very little hops, so it's it's definitely one of those beers where if I've had a heavy meal and I don't want anything, you know, too obtrusive, I'm gonna drink this. Or if I know I'm gonna drink several of them, I'm gonna drink this, which is good because it's available as a six pack. But as I just found out, I can break that up if I want to. But they got a whole lot of grains. I mean, a ton of different ga grains. As far as hops, it's got um, uh, Magnum and one of the ones that start with C. That's good. Chinook? Really? In <laughs> intuition, y'all need to do something because I can't read this. And I'll say this. Intuition, those, those guys, um, they can brew, man. That um, that I ten IPA they have, that oh, King Street so Stout. Good. Those guys can brew, and I'm 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 remiss that I didn't get to try that pale ale when when uh when you and I were there, Lola. But I mean, if they can, as good as those other beers are, man, if that pale ale, I I, I would expect that to be like a go-to summertime beer, especially considering it's really low on IBUs. Um, and you could you could probably it was I think you only said like four point something percent. 5.9 percent, 5.3. Mm -hmm. You that's a session beer, man, easily. Yeah, it's, well, it's, for me. I mean, it's it's like drinking a soda, basically. <clears throat> um, it's Cascade and Centennial. I had to get the light right on it. So. Drinking a soda. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, not not much more IBU than that. Um, so it's pretty good. I like it. I mean, I love my intuition. They're great people and. Got the cute little can. Yeah, I like I like a brewery that's canning their beer too. So who else has a can on here? Who else has an IP uh, pale ale? Charles, let's talk to Charles about the pale ale he's got. Okay, 
I um, my selection tonight is my current favorite pale ale on the market, and uh, that is the Bronx Pale Ale. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And this one, this one is, like I said, more of an old school. It's malt forward. I was looking at their website here, and uh, wow, that, that is malt. Very much. Yeah. It is a six point three ABV, uh, fifty IBUs, twenty mm -hmm. SRM. And uh, it's got five different malts um, from British, German, and American malts. Uh, and it's got Centennial and Cascaded in it as well. And this is really that brewery's flagship beer. This is like their, I mean, they, they brew quite a few things, but this is their main one. And um, What's the name of the brewery again? Uh, Bronx. Bronx Brewery. Okay. Are they out of the Bronx? Yep, they are in the Bronx. That's from Arizona. No, I'm gonna say that's like, that's like Beastie Boys Bizarro World. Instead yeah. of straight out of Brooklyn, it's straight out of Bronx. <laughs> yeah, but, yep, yeah, they are from the Bronx. This is that's kind of one of their logos there. It's a little hard, but I, I love the packaging because it's got that sort of urban design. It really yeah. suits the Bronx very really well. You know? Six point three percent. That really is. You know, we're talking about blurring the lines, but that really is pushing in on what an IPA w would be with all the malt and all the. <coughs> yeah, but this is, and and it, you can taste there's a little bit of the citrusy stuff from the Centennial and the Cascade, but you really get that like sweetness, that caramel, all the big the malts are there, and to me, like I said, they really are the star of this beer. Um, I've been looking. I my ale. For many many years, for decades, was Bass Bass Ale, uh, until they got bought out by one of the giant corporations and absolutely destroyed that beer. And uh, it was Smutty Nose uh, Shoals Pale Ale became my go-to pale ale because I mean that's another really great great pale ale on the market. Um, and that pretty much was my favorite until I came across this beer. Um, it, it's just it, they sell it in cans, 16 ounce cans, uh, four packs. Um, they make a whole bunch of other beers. They have IPAs. They've got black IPAs, but I haven't gotten my hands. This is the only thing that comes from them into where I am right now. One of my my next trip in the city is definitely going to be picking up um, some more of their beers. But um, <clears throat> they, again, it's just the tap house and everything at the brewery. I mean, can you go right to the source? Um, yeah, I believe they've been expanding. I think they've got a tap house now where you can go and actually visit and and um, get beers and some food. Um, I have to check out the neighborhood. It's in a neighborhood that, when I was younger, I would never set foot in, but the Bronx has changed quite a bit since then. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're helping to revitalize the area that they're in. Uh, but um, if you like a, more of an English-style malty ale, this is definitely a beer to check out. It's quite delicious. Awesome. So... Um uh, brewed in Bronx. I'm, I'm assuming that's what BIB stands for. Yep, the <laughs> B, their, BB is yep Bronx Brewery. With their pale ale that seems to lean more towards the the English uh, side of the spectrum, since you said the yeah. it has a you know it's kind of kind of malt forward. So yeah, you get the malt, you get that that caramel taste. You know, it looks it good, man. I would yeah. never guess pale ale just by looking at that in the glass. Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't look like it. It's more, it looks more of like, and even on their website, they say it's the deep am amber American pale ale. They, well, you know, because it has like that amber look to it. That's got to be right at the top of the SRM right there for that style. So, good stuff, yeah, man. Nice. Good stuff. Cool. A 16 ounce can for you to, you know, you won't have to hit the cooler so much when you're grilling out. That's right. So. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey. What's going on? Hey, uh, for me about the style, I mean, I don't buy uh, American Pale Ales a lot, um, but I'm sort of with Charles. Uh, it's a it's a great way to kind of suss out a brewery and, and see you know what they're up to because um, basically there's nothing to hide behind on a pale ale. You know, for me, it's it's about balance and and really drinkability. Um, you know, so you know you want something that's smooth and just tasty and just kind of well put together and goes down well. So. I'm tonight and drinking uh, a beer from a brewery that, you know, to me can almost do no wrong. Um, every beer I've had from Alaskan Brewery has been pretty solid. I've never had a bad beer from those guys. Um, 
this is a this is their big mountain pale ale. I've had this beer a couple times before and really enjoyed it. Um, it's a seasonal release, a spring seasonal release. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not sure, but I think this might have been released last spring. Um, the bottle I have isn't doesn't seem to be super fresh. It's not as as not as kind of pungent as I remember. But it's, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't you know, pop. It doesn't pop. Yeah, you know, I, I remember this beer before having a you know, a really big, pretty hoppy nose, um, a little more citrusy. It, it's still a great beer, but it just, it just isn't, isn't kicking like, like I remember. But it's you know, nice kind of on the copper end of, uh, of the SRM spectrum. I think it's 15, um, and it's uh, 45 IBUs, um, 5.7 APV. You get, um, you know, you get, you get pretty, pretty nice citrus, um, a little bit of grassiness, which tends to be. What I found uh, with Alaskan, a lot of their beers are, you know, sort of on the grassy side, both in the in the nose and a little bit on the on the finish. And, and this is, you know, this is true to form to that. Um, they they uh, dry hop this with Simcoe and Mosaic, so if you get it fresh, it's it's really nice. This is this is not bad, but it's uh, it's obviously not as good as it can be. So that's what I'm on for my first one tonight. And I, I I've been. Uh, I picked up a six pack of their free ride American Pale, and that's what I've been sessioning for the last couple of days, and that is fresh, and that's really good as well. And I'll be on that momentarily, I believe. So, for what it's worth, um, we we we've you know Matt, we we've had Alaskan on Pints and Quartz, and um, you know those those guys, they just make good beer. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, Jeffrey can attest that even now, a year old, the beer is still pretty oh, good. It's, it's drinkable, totally. So, so yeah. if you if you were to get that beer fresh, I mean, and it should be coming out like any any, yeah, now, I would assume it's out now. It's out now, so it's pro it's probably knocking on awesome right now. If you can yeah. if you can get your hands on it, yeah, and, it's possible that Jeffrey's got a um, one that's was in the in the back on the shelf last from last year or that's what I'm, that's what I'm pretty sure. It's that's what it tastes like, man. I buy it at a grocery store and it, I think it's been in distribution yeah. for a while, so. Yeah, that that we had we had that beer when we interviewed them back. Mm -hmm. I forget when it was in January or something, and it was very bright. I mean, mm -hmm. it was the the aroma was was certainly all of uh, what you remember it being from the yeah, last. Right, right. So cheers to those guys. Um, yeah, right. I, I I wish we had uh, um, more access to Alaskan here in uh, here in Virginia, but it's a lot of. So it's a lot of work to get distribution from Alaska, Alaska all the way to Virginia. So they do. They're they're widely distributed here um, in Texas. Um, you know, when I go to, I go to Nevada a lot. They're very available out there. So I just don't think they make it that far uh, east of the Mississippi. I think when we talked to Andy Klein, they were just getting ready to launch in Michigan, and that was the furthest east they had pushed yet. Yeah. So so cheers to those guys, and yeah. here's to here's to getting some more of their beer here on the on the Beast Coast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Matt, I know you're probably down right at the very last swallow of whatever beer it is that you're drinking. Yeah. So go, go jump in there, man. I am, and I am, and I have uh, I, I bought 24 ounces of it too. So I uh, I decided, you know, many of us have had that Alaskan beer that Jeffrey has uh, tonight, but I think everyone on the panel, I would assume, has had uh, Big Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale. Classic. Who makes that? I was, that? I was yeah. just thinking to myself. His name is Ken Rose. Rose. I was getting ready to type it in the side here. I was like, "Is anybody bring in yeah. the original?" Yeah, Ken Grossman personally mashes out um, grain outs all of the uh, the brute. No, it's uh, a th this really is a staple, and I, I find myself I I bought this at the gas station this afternoon, and it actually was packaged uh, in the end of January, so it's relatively fresh, or actually very fresh. And uh, into the gas, you know, the, one of those gas stations has got a beer cave, right? Cooler doors, you walk mm. in, yeah. and Macro, as far as the eye can see, and there was a craft shelf, I'll call it, that had a couple of local brews, a couple of, you know, they had lots of local signage, but about three local beers, and then these guys. And um, and personally, you know, if you've got to make a beer decision uh, in, on the go or or in a you're in a bad place where they don't have craft taps, <laughs> typically Sierra Nevada has grown to that point where they can get on tap locations um, through their distribution channels, and and this to me is is brilliant. This is a great. This is a great go-to beer here. Um, it's fine. Matt, you said if you're in a bad place. <laughs> if you're in a bad place. If you're, in a, if you're in a bar that has eight taps and they start with Coors Light, Miller Light, Bud Light, that's a bad place, right? And, and the Yungling. 
and then with the yingling. That's the crowd, the yingling. Yeah. yeah, yingling's not a bad choice if you got to make one, too. Yeah, Matt, Matt you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of like what Charles was talking about. Sierra Nevada was my kind of go-to beer for, I mean, for years. And, uh, you know, I, I still drink it, but I, you know, I don't always have it in my fridge like I used to. And, and uh, you know, I drink a lot of our other beers. But I find that's a beer that if you if you haven't had it for a couple months and then you just pick one up, Damn, this is a solid beer. You know, I mean, this is yeah. such a great beer. Yeah, it, it's great beer too. If, like, if you're having people over to the house for like a party or you know, some get together, you just think, we'll load up on something that's you know not completely overwhelming, but it's not you know macro. Yeah, this is the end of my 24 ounces of this, and um, it is uh, you know golden coppery in color. It's definitely clear. It's it's still. Uh, bubbling away here now, so it's got plenty of carbonation in it for a pale ale, and it isn't it isn't abrasive in any way. I mean, it's not it, it's well balanced and it's light. Um, yeah. The the malts are there and present. The yeast is there and, and present. The hops are there and present, but none of them really say or none of them are going to upset anyone. And I and I think it's a very approachable beer. I think it's it showcases all of the all of the things that it tries to do well. And I and I probably think that's why. If you if you go to the BJCP, they've actually I think they well, didn't Dave Hausman tell us that they've tweaked uh, the American Pale Ale uh, guidelines to really match what what Sierra Nevada does with this pale ale. This is Makes the sense. de facto really? standard of an American Pale yeah. Ale. Good style yeah. reference. Yeah, I think that's the highest compliment. Yeah, I mean yeah. it makes sense. I mean I mean there's never anything. There's never ever 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 ever. Anytime you get that beer, there's never anything wrong with it. Yep. Every single time, it's the same. It's it's consistent. And they just, I mean, hell, I've said this about everybody tonight. They can brew. They can brew. <laughs> they can. <laughs> so they can. Cheers to Sierra Nevada, not only for uh, you know, for making a good a good pale, uh, excellent pale ale, but for essentially being being the the, the standard bearer for that style in America. That's yeah. That's incredible. That's that's that that's a uh, that's something. There's something to be said about that, man. That's something yeah. to be proud of. All right, that's that's it for me. What, what right. else? Is... Well, I'm going local tonight. Um, I'm. I, I thought this beer was actually Charles's favorite pale ale, but to, to my chagrin, it is not. Um, it's probably Matt's favorite pale ale, I'd guess, right? Right at the um, top, right in the top few, that's for sure. I'm, I'm going with DC Browse, the public. This is their pale ale. Um, that I for the longest I thought, I, the first few times that I had it, I thought it told the line of being an IPA as well. But now, like tonight, and and this is really fresh. This can was canned on um on March 12th, so this beer is like like you know uh, two three weeks old or whatever. But um, this. It doesn't look like a pale ale, right? I mean, well, the camera isn't really doing it any justice now, but this beer is totally car caramel in color, and um, yeah. and they say that well, they 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 don't tell tell you what kind of hops they use. They just said grapefruit and citrus aroma that begs for a follow up sip, but um, the the beer is their malt bill has C60 in it, and then it has Vienna malt. Which leads to the reason why I'm getting this caramel color, and also, surprisingly, on the on the nose, I get a lot of caramel on the nose. But you get a lot of you 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 get really decent hop bitterness. You get hoppiness, which is the two things are different. You get you get hoppiness, you get hop bitterness. But man, this 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 beer is so so nicely caramel that I mean it's it's fantastic, man. They um they did a good job with this. Um, it's only I'm not sure what the IBUs are on this beer. I want to say it's somewhere around. Th I'd I'd be lying. <laughs> just, just make, just make up a number. Well, I, I, I definitely think it's in the 50 60 range at least, don't you think? Approximately. I was gonna I was gonna say 60, but then I I didn't I didn't want to lie so. Cause those are those are good people. They make good beer, and they might say they might. I don't want DC Brow to call me a liar. <laughs> but anyway, because they can um, brew. Because they can brew, man. They can guys, brew. I'm telling <laughs> you, man. I don't think they've ever had a beer that I didn't like. So, and I got a six pack of their uh, smells like freedom, 
which is their IPA that they did with, with Oscar Blues. That's a Blues. six pack on top of the two growlers you had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think Randy Look, I, that I, had two, I had two growlers, and then I got a six pack of it. And... Does Randy like dank beer? It I might. Know. I don't know. I, it's a dank, <laughs> you know. I, I tend to lean that way certain times. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this beer, um, I would say it's a good example of the style. It's, it's 6% ABV. Um, I used to consider Dale's Pale Ale to be like my go-to summer beer. Um, that was before I really had an appreciation of, for like true lower ABV beers. But I mean, this th- I would have no problem at all, you know, drinking a six-pack of this while I'm while I'm on the grill in the summertime. But um, in and and it's just packed with flavor. It's not just it's not just a a hop a hop overload. It's not just a a a, a malt overload. This is like a very well-made. Uh, American Pale Ale and cheers to DC Bar. You guys, you're done good. So, there's that. Um. So, final thoughts. Let's run the board. Tom, your overall thoughts on American Pale Ales. Go. Very, very drinkable. Um, I always have them in my fridge. Good. Tom will always have American Paleos in his fridge. So when you go to his house, whether you be in Florida or northern Georgia or on a circus train going to California, you will always be able to get an American Pale Ale. Ricky Potts. Ricky, what do you think? So I think Pale Ales have a place. There's no doubt that they have a place, and they should be at the beginning of every craft beer lover's journey. And the guy that's standing next to me that says, oh, I only drink Coors Light, what's craft beer all about? A pale ale, and specifically this year in Nevada Pale Ale, that's where I'm going to start them. So it's the foundation of what makes a craft beer lover a craft beer lover, and I'm never going to turn one down. And if I haven't had, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. And, you know, I want to say this real quick. When when I go to a brewery that I haven't been to before, the first beer that I get is not the IPA. Because if you're going to be a brewery, you have to make a decent IPA nowadays. I'm going to either get I'm going to either judge you based off of how you brew your stout or I'm going to see how you're making your 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 pale ale. So, like Jeffrey said earlier, there's nothing to hide behind. You got if you're going to make a pale ale, it needs to be decent. So, Lola, thoughts on AP? If you don't want to get trashed and it's hot or you've had a heavy meal, it's perfect. It's just one of those beers you can drink at any time and it's not going to interfere with anything. All right. Um, let me jump over you, Lola. Doug Nolan, before you leave, because you're about to bounce, unmute yourself and divulge your thoughts on the American Pale Ale. I will say that I am pretty much in line with Charles when it comes to Pale Ales. It's such a great style. It's such a classic style. They're so easy drinking. You you kind of when I, I when I also go to breweries, I also at times I look at IPAs if they don't have Pale Ales, but if they have a Pale Ale, I always try to go for it. Um, I think it's almost like the, you know, we mentioned it, touched on before, like Session IPAs. I feel like it's almost, you know, kind of like the original Hot Ford at times, you know, Session beer where you can, you know, almost like, you know, your lawnmower beers. They're, they're yeah. just great, easy drinking, you know, flavorful, malty, but, you know, still enough hops to kind of balance it out and even sometimes take it up a notch, but I love them. Doug Nolan likes American Parallels. Jeffrey J. Davis. If you're looking, you yeah, if you're looking for American Parallels, uh, don't look in my refrigerator because unless we're having uh, Friday night hangout on them, I probably don't have any in my fridge. Go to Tom's; he's got them. But uh, if you see me at the beach, I may have some in my cooler, and I'll tighten you up. So yeah, there you go. There so. You go. If if Tom if you're on Tom's train and you run out of pale ale and you happen to be going past a beach and Tom yeah. kicks you off the train, find Jeffrey and you can get your pale ale fixed. No, 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 no. On the be- even on the beach he's got a quad in the cooler. Who's he <laughs> yeah. to, or a, a Belgian pale ale. Yeah, exactly. yeah a blonde ale, yeah. yeah. Charles Dunkley. Okay. Yeah, so like I said before, this is really the style that lets me know how a brewery is doing in terms of quality and control and just it's what I look for first. And for me, I don't drink as much during the winter. I get more into the porters and the stouts than Belgians. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the spring, summer, um, I I like to seek out different pale outs. And um, 
even as big and popular as the session IPA is becoming, I, I'm still going to go for a pale ale over the session IPA. Because if I want that. hops, I'm just going to go for the IPA anyway. I mean, not that I don't like the sessions, but I think there's the pale ale has a bit more to offer than the session IPA. It has a different dimension of flavor with that with the malt component, right? Yeah, I, I like um, how the pale ales can explore the malts more than really a session IPA will. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Yep. Charles prefers pale ales over session IPAs. Mm -hmm. Charles, Charles like flavor. In case you're keeping score at home. <laughs> yep. right. And Matt, final thoughts on American pale ale. Well, you know, I've heard a lot of the great things here that I agree with. You know, drinkability and and easygoing and all those kind of things. And to me, that makes it the beer approachable. So if I'm in, and this happens to all of us on this panel. Um, you're you're at a, a work party or you're you're someplace and someone says, "Man, you're the beer guy. Uh, I like Killian's. So what what should I drink?" And I'll I'll steal it. I'll steer them toward a, a pale ale. I'll say, you know, let's let's not drop these guys into a you know a six point high res, you know, a triple high, you know, some kind of thing that's going to make their teeth shatter. So let's mm -hmm. let's start with an, a pale ale, and then when they when they when they find something there that they like. Um, then you can you can they can start to appreciate uh, fuller flavored beers from there. So I, I think there's a place for it. I think they're wonderful and and I love them. Well, just like um, my thoughts are, just like every I, I I'm a, an, in line with what everybody else has said. Um, the the original American session beer, right? I'm not gonna say the original session beer because they've been brewing ESBs in 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 the UK and all that stuff for a long time. But I mean, this is probably one of the original session beers, right? Um, oh yeah. It's not too high in ABV. Plenty of flavor. Um, gives you a hop fix if that's what you want. And um, just always, m most most breweries, with the exception of that, uh, the the one that Jeffrey had, I think all of these beers are probably year round offerings from from their respective breweries. So um, you know if you if your drinking isn't seasonal dependent, you can still get to a solid pale ale in the winter. If your drinking is seasonal dependent and you want to, you know, I don't know if y'all can tell how I'm itching to get on my grill, but if you want to grill out <laughs> and, and you know, and just have a good flavorful beer while you're doing that, this, the American pale ale is absolutely the style for you. You haven't even lit up your grill yet, bro? Nah, man. It's, oh, <laughs> you, oh, yeah. man that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> And in case anybody wants to know before we go, Ashley Bauer is riding in her car right now, chewing us all out at the top of her voice. We have talked about American Pale Ales from the beginning to the end, and English Pales, all these other ESBs, all these other things that are qualified as Pale Ales are her favorites, and she's pissed at us. So. Well, then, <laughs> Sorry, they're, Ashley. They're not American Pale Ales, so uh, <laughs> I guess the top tonight is Pale Ales, though, right? Yeah, that's right. We really and nobody had a non-American pale ale tonight. <laughs> I went to the grocery store, so we are awesome. we are patriots. Yeah, <laughs> but that gives us uh, it gives us an opportunity to follow up on the style. Yeah, you know, there you a little go. bit. Maybe uh, in the later spring or summer. I think that's a good idea. We should have an English English pale ale. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's definitely doable. We so can have a pale off. Be on the lookout for our for our pale off, or perhaps just another another pale off episode where we try to put a little more emphasis on 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 the English style, or maybe even uh, let's just call it a European pale ales, because because Jeffrey, I'm sure you 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 have some good uh, Belgian Belgian, oh, yeah. 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 So um, be sure to join us next week when the style is IPAs. Um, I'm sure you're going to get a lot more expansive. Well, I don't know. We did pretty good tonight, but the descriptors are going to be a lot pro a lot more livelier next week when, when when we start diving into all these different hop components and hop combinations as it relates to this, this style that so many of us craft beer lovers love, and that's IPAs. So thank you for joining us. Cheers, and we'll see you next week when we're talking about IPAs on next week's edition of Craft Beer Nation's Friday Night Hangout. Cheers. 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 Cheers.